WIMIS. WIMIS stands for the Workplace Hazardous Materials Information System. The supplier must provide and your employer must obtain a Material Safety Data Sheet or MSDS for all controlled products purchased for use in the workplace. The Material Safety Data Sheet can be written, printed or otherwise produced but must contain these nine categories. Product Information. This section identifies the product and lists important emergency phone numbers. Hazardous Ingredients. Physical data, fire and explosion data. This covers important firefighting control measures. Reactivity data can provide warnings, for example, about products that should never be mixed together. Toxicological or health hazard properties tells you what could happen if you accidentally swallow, ingest, or inhale the product. First aid measures provide you with important information to respond in an emergency. Read this and be prepared to respond before an emergency occurs. Preventive measures outlines safe procedures for the use, storage, handling and disposal of the chemical. The preparation information tells you the name and phone number of the company which prepared the MSDS and the date on which it was prepared. The date is required because the law says material safety data sheets must be revised every three years or as new information becomes available. Do you know where your facility's MSDS are located? The MSDS binder should be located in an area that is readily accessible at all times, on all shifts. An MSDS binder for all the hazardous materials specific to your work area should be available. A hazardous material inventory could be created for your worksite and be used as the table of contents in your MSDS binder. During the workplace inspection is a good time to check if the hazardous material inventory and the MSDS binder are up to date. MSDS and labels provide us with important information to make sure we go home safely at the end of the day. There are certain classes of products that are completely or partially exempt from the WIMIS regulations. The following products are completely exempt from the WIMIS requirements. Wood and wood products, manufactured articles, tobacco or products derived from tobacco, hazardous wastes, products handled or transported under the Transportation of Dangerous Goods Act and regulations. The following products are partially exempt from the WIMIS legislation. Cosmetics and drugs, explosives, pesticides, radioactive substances, some consumer products. There are some labels on products that we use every day at work or at home. Because of the widespread use of some of these consumer products in healthcare, we will talk about these common household chemicals next. Bleach, cleaning supplies and paint thinners are products that can be found in most of our homes. Some of these familiar household items are also widely used when we go to work in home health care, group homes, retirement and nursing homes, and child care centers. Because you're familiar with these products, you may think that they are safer than WIMIS products. Never forget that these products could also harm you, your co-worker or client, if they are not handled, used, or stored properly. Consumer products are generally used for personal, family, or household purposes and are packaged as a consumer product. This means the product is in a package in which it is offered for sale and normally displayed to the public and is available to the general public through retail systems. Consumer products are exempt from the WIMIS requirements for supplier labels and MSDS, 
but you are still required to know how to use, handle, and store them properly. Consumer-restricted products have their own unique label form. There are three different shapes that indicate the degree of hazard. A diamond shape indicates warning. There are special hazards and requirements associated with these products. The stop sign shape indicates danger. This product can severely harm you or someone else. The triangle or yield sign shape indicates caution. This product can cause moderate harm. There are four pictograms that indicate the type of the hazard. The fire symbol indicates the product could ignite if exposed to a spark or flame. The skull and crossbone warns of a potentially fatal product if swallowed. The bomb symbol indicates the product could explode if heated or dropped. This symbol showing the bones in the hand means the product could corrode metals or damage your skin. Used together, the shaped border and symbol indicate the type and degree of the hazard. For example, this indicates dangerous corrosive material. Hazardous materials in the workplace can be grouped into three main categories. One, physical, such as heat, noise, and radiation. Two, biological, such as bacteria, mold, viruses, and parasites. Three, chemical, such as solids, liquids, or gas. The chemical form of a hazardous material plays an important role in its ability to be taken up by the body. A change in conditions, for example, temperature or pressure or mechanical agitation, can change the chemical form into dusts, fumes, smoke, mists, or vapors. All of these forms of hazardous materials can contaminate the workplace air and expose the body to harmful effects. There are four main routes by which these materials can enter the body. Some hazardous materials can be absorbed through the skin. They can then either affect the skin directly or be absorbed in the blood and travel to other body organs. It is very important to wear items such as proper gowns, aprons, and gloves to prevent absorption. Inhalation is the main route of entry for most workplace exposures. If a hazardous material is inhaled, it can exert its effects directly on the respiratory system itself or, if the particles are small enough, they can pass through the lungs and be absorbed into the bloodstream to affect other organs, tissues, and blood. Exposure to hazardous materials by accidental injection from needles, lancets, and other sharp objects can be a concern for you on the job. Review your organization's infection control policies and procedures. Follow safe work practices and carefully dispose of all sharps in a properly labeled, puncture-resistant container. Eating or drinking in dusty areas means that you could be ingesting some harmful products along with your lunch. If you forget to wash your hands, you could be contributing to this route of exposure. Remember to always practice good personal hygiene and safe work procedures. It is important to read the MSDS before you start working with any hazardous material. It provides you with information about how the hazardous material can enter the body and its potential health effects. It also provides you with first aid information so you can promptly respond in an emergency. A hazardous material can be toxic, but it may not harm your health if it doesn't enter your body. But if the substance does get into your body, there are four main sites where disease or damage can occur. 1. At the site of entry, such as the lungs or skin. 2. In the blood that carries the agents throughout the body. 3. In the central nervous system, reproductive system, or digestive system. 4. In the organs, such as the liver, kidney, and bladder. A hazardous agent may produce acute or chronic effects on the body. For example, 
exposure of the skin to bleach can result in acute effects such as irritation and reddening of the skin. Prolonged or repeated skin contact could result in a chronic skin condition called allergic contact dermatitis. Your liver, kidneys and bladder are important defense organs that can also be damaged from hazardous materials. When substances enter the blood, the kidneys work as filters to remove the harmful toxins from the blood and deposit them in the urine. The bladder then controls the exit of toxins from the body. Both the kidneys and the bladder are susceptible to injury or disease from hazardous materials passing through the body. Recognizing and evaluating the hazards in your workplace aren't enough. There's one more step. Control. Hazard control is a vital step in the WIMIS system. Before using any products, review the control measure of the MSDS to ensure every reasonable step has been taken to keep you healthy and safe. Hazards in the workplace can be controlled at three areas. The source, the path, and the worker. The first line of defense should be at the source. To control hazards at the source, consider eliminating, substituting, or isolating the hazardous material. Modifying the process can also help to control the hazard at the source. Local or general ventilation can be used to control the hazard along the path between the source and the worker. General ventilation in some situations can be used to reduce the concentrations of hazardous materials to acceptable limits. The use of barriers, such as shields or screens, are other ways to interrupt the path of the hazardous material. In all workplaces, good housekeeping plays a vital role in helping to prevent exposure to hazardous materials by controlling them along the path. Implementing controls at the worker level should be considered only after process and engineering controls have been evaluated at the source and along the path. Read the control section of the MSDS before starting work. This section will tell you the type of personal protective equipment appropriate for the job. Goggles, face shields, aprons, boots, masks and gowns can only protect you if they are the right kind of protection for the job you are doing. Personal protective equipment should always be used as a last line of defense to protect your health and safety. During your workplace-specific WIMIS training, ask your supervisor to show you the location of emergency equipment. Make sure you know before an emergency occurs how to use the equipment or who to call. Play an active role in keeping your workplace safe. WIMIS works, and it can work for you.